Okay. And the next speaker is going to be uh, Radek Cibulka. He has already shared his slides. So Radek uh, is also a collaborator of Asen Donchev. Uh, we had a joint paper, the three of us, some time ago. And the topic of Radek's presentation is not too far from uh, the topic of what we worked on previously. So Radek, please, uh, you, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask if you hear me and see my slides. It's okay, everything? Yeah, everything okay. is fine. You can want to make it full screen probably. Uh, I think that this is okay for me. <laughs> I will write uh, some notes oh, okay. uh, there, so uh, oh, okay. I will use this. So uh, it's great pleasure to for me to uh, have an opportunity to speak uh, to such a wonderful audience. And of course, uh, I am uh, a collaborator with Sen Donchev and uh, I would like to dedicate uh, this talk to him because uh, it was a uh, close colleague, mentor and friend. So I think that uh, uh, many nice words have been said during uh, last two hours and uh, I would like to dedicate this lecture also to SN. It is based on a joint work uh, with Tomáš Roubal and uh, it's about the ranges of nonlinear and set valued mappings. So uh, just uh, to uh, motivate my uh, talk a bit, uh, I would like to uh, speak about uh, some uh, ranges of single valued mappings at first, then I will simplify the things even more uh, to particular case of uh, single valued mappings, uh, which I will call quadratic. And then uh, I will somehow uh, present a general framework uh, which uh, somehow encompasses uh, all these things. But uh, let me start with motivation because uh, especially Janos uh, always asks me about motivation. So I would like to uh, present one. So uh, let's start with a, a simple, say, observation or a simple problem. Uh, we have a function G between finite dimensional spaces and uh, suppose that uh, you want to compute a set which uh, will be uh, denoted by gamma such that uh, this set is inside the image uh, under the given mapping. So G is nonlinear mapping and I want to compute this set. Yeah? So uh, I would like uh, somehow to determine uh, the set inside the nonlinear image of uh, a convex set. So it means that for each right hand side, you are able to find a solution lying in omega such that uh, g of x equals to y. Uh, more generally, you can have another function, say h and uh, you want to solve not only the equation, but you have some additional constraints that uh, the values of the second mapping uh, lie in another set. Of course, uh, this problem itself is uh, very hard from the computational point of view. So uh, often and uh, I think that the only instances of the set I am able to solve is when gamma and this second set uh, is uh, the ordered interval, which means that uh, uh, all y's inside lie between uh, some uh, given vectors, all these inequalities will be understood coordinate wise in 
RM, and uh, this will be uh, the case when I am uh, able to provide, uh, in fact, the computation of this uh, uh, set gamma, uh, which I am looking for. So this is uh, the general motivation, and I will go to the ground even more. So uh, assume that your mappings are not uh, general nonlinear mappings, but uh, they are quadratic. So my mapping F will be uh, quadratic in each component. So I am I have a matrix uh, AJ always. Uh, this matrix is symmetric, but the problem with this is that uh, this matrix uh, does not be uh, does not need to be positive uh, semi-definite. So uh, in general, it's indefinite. So this quadratic form can behave really ugly. And you have some vectors and uh, coefficients, so uh, you have some linear part also there. Uh, the main motivation from uh, for this uh, is from the uh, power network security problems, where these uh, Z uh, are powers injected in the network, for example. Uh, by power plants uh, such as nuclear power plants, uh, but also renewable energy sources. And uh, you want to uh, be sure that your axes uh, satisfy uh, some constraints given by security limits. Yes, yeah? so my security set uh, where the solutions are supposed to live uh, is simply a polyhedral set. Uh, so it is given by an, the matrix and another vector. And uh, the aim of uh, this uh, application is to find uh, these bounds uh, which determine the ordered interval from which I am able to take any uh, Z and I am able to find a solution uh, which corresponds to uh, nodal voltages therein, such that uh, this uh, solution satisfies the security limits and also uh, some other constraints uh, given by another uh, set. So this is. Uh, my setting uh, and uh, even this simplified uh, situation is not completely trivial because these matrices are uh, once more uh, indefinite. So uh, you have quadratic constraints in principle, but uh, uh, there are not convex. And uh, also uh, the dimension of the problem is relatively high. So uh, you have something uh, like 1000, 2000, and you want to find these uh, uh, optimal, say, uh, points uh, determining the box uh, uh, almost online. So your computation has to be rather quick. So this is the setting and uh, I will go to the main theorem I want to present, which uh, somehow answers uh, these uh, questions. So uh, I am working uh, now not in finite dimensions, but uh, in general Banach spaces, but my Y, the target space, will be uh, always finite dimensional. I would like to mention one name which is almost forgotten and uh, it's uh, uh, Hubert Halkin who uh, produced uh, many interesting papers uh, in this direction. And uh, it's a pity that uh, people do not cite them or even do not know about uh, these papers by Hubert Halkin. So uh, assume that uh, 
you are able uh, to approximate a nonlinear mapping by a set, convex set of uh, linear, continuous linear operators uh, with some error. So there are two uh, or three conditions uh, there. So uh, the first condition is about the range of the partial linearization. So this is called often partial linearization of F. And uh, this condition says that uh, the range of the partial linearization has to contain my set gamma and also enlarged by an error, which is uh, given here in B because uh, I am able to approximate the nonlinear mapping by a linear mapping, uh, and this determines the error. Just uh, a, a quick remark uh, for each U, I am able to find uh, probably different uh, operator which approximates the value of F at this given point uh, U. This will be crucial uh, in a minute. And the last assumption is that uh, the partial linearization have convex pre-images. And the conclusion is that uh, the range of the nonlinear mapping uh, itself uh, contains the prescribed set uh, gamma. Of course, uh, uh, a simple observation is that uh, this statement covers uh, both the problems discussed uh, in the previous slides. So this is quite obvious. And uh, this is a general, uh, general statement. Uh, I will uh, just say that uh, there is one open question. Uh, I, we, do, we do not know whether this assumption that uh, the set of errors is open can be removed. So uh, we do not know if this can be deleted. And if so, then you can work even in fresh spaces and uh, without uh, this restrictive uh, assumption on finite dimensionality of the target space. But anyway, I would like to uh, somehow uh, say that even this theorem is rich enough to cover a huge regular, uh, regularity result uh, area uh, in the literature. And uh, the rest of my talk is uh, to try to convince you about this. So let uh, uh, just uh, skip uh, the proof ingredients just uh, uh, to uh, know what is inside its uh, usual line segment principle, extension of Kakutani fixed point theorem and Michael selection theorem. Yeah? So the tools which are quite uh, known in variational analysis. So let's go to the ground and assume that uh, my set valued part is simply zero. So uh, if you reformulate uh, this, uh, the previous statement in this way, then uh, the condition C uh, is not present because uh, your linearizations are simply uh, linear operators. So the convexity of the pre images is uh, always satisfied. And uh, you have uh, the statement that if each approximation contains uh, in the image, uh, a set omega enlarged by the error, and uh, you have suitable approximation, then the nonlinear image contains this prescribed set. So again, uh, here I have a dependence of my approximation on the current point. So this is uh, just simplification and uh, let's go to consequences. The first corollary is, uh, I would like uh, to say the 
due to Alexei Ismailov because uh, he asked us uh, a year ago or something like this, whether uh, some directional stuff can be done. And uh, here I uh, have a mapping uh, which uh, can be approximated by one matrix. Yeah. So approximation set contains only one matrix and this is nothing else but, uh, for example, fresh differentiability of uh, the mapping F. And uh, the key uh, thing is that uh, in finite dimensions, you don't need strict differentiability. Fresh differentiability is enough, but uh, then you don't uh, succeed with usual, usual tools uh, like uh, Banach contraction mapping principle, but the tool with the, which is needed is Brouwer fixed point theorem or Kakutanis extension and so on. So this uh, goes uh, by the uh, Brouwer fixed point theorem, for example. And uh, of course, I have some openness assumption on my approximation. And uh, the statement says that uh, you are able to solve nonlinear equation for a right hand side arising in some cone. I will present a, uh, a picture in a minute. So uh, do not uh, try to penetrate everything. The picture is uh, very simple. And uh, just uh, to uh, look on the length of the proof, yeah, so almost uh, four lines are enough. You simply define precisely the sets and then everything follows from the main theorem. And I would like to emphasize that the same is true for all the results I am, pre I am presenting next, yeah? So then uh, uh, it's really, really uh, easy to uh, obtain many results with some extra if effort, you can delete here uh, the assumption that your set is closed. Yeah, it's uh, something like uh, the statement of Robinson Urcescu in finite dimensions. Uh, uh, your mapping uh, has to have closed graph, but not uh, does not need to have closed graph. Uh, the convexity is enough. Yeah, so. Uh, the picture, the promised picture is that uh, uh, you have some big ball, say this in the linear image. Yeah? The interesting case is when the reference point is not zero, so you have some directional be behavior there. And this ball I uh, draw uh, or tried to draw uh, is in the linear image. Yeah? This is precisely this condition. Yeah, this condition that the liminar image contains enough big ball. Yeah, so this is uh, inside. Then uh, since zero is always there, uh, you have uh, the whole cone, this whole cone in the linear image. Yeah, you have this uh, cone simply by the uh, line segment principle. And the conclusion is that uh, in the nonlinear image, uh, you are sure to have uh, a smaller cone, which is uh, something like this. So this smaller cone intersected uh, with some neighborhood uh, of zero. So in the nonlinear image, essentially, you are sure to contain this uh, red part and uh, this is uh, the description of the phenomenon described uh, in the th theorem. So uh, this uh, picture is uh, somehow uh, leading and I think that the idea is uh, very easy. If a bigger clone is in the linear image, a smaller cone is in the nonlinear image. 
And uh, this is the case when I use uh, just uh, one approximation. Yeah, so here I have only one matrix A. So uh, what about uh, uh, the situation with boxes? So this query uh, is in the same spirit, which says that if uh, I approximate my F with one matrix A and a bigger box is in the inner linear image, and the approximation error is sufficiently small, then the nonlinear image contains a shifted box. Yeah? So this is uh, precisely the case uh, of boxes. And in the nonlinear image is smaller box. Uh, and you have to uh, compute the errors yeah, here. So in the linear image is a bigger box and uh, you shrink it by the error. Again, the proof is very easy and uh, people uh, working in net network security problems uh, used, every th uh, used every time this. Just simply linearize the problem, make six, compute this box, and then said, okay, this is the secure uh, box of power injection. But, but the drawback is that uh, you have to compute the error on the whole set omega. So this error here is uh, very, very big. And uh, if you shrink this linear box, uh, by the error, then you end up with empty set. So this is the no, this is not the right way. So uh, that's why I'm uh, calling this uh, local result useless. So uh, let's uh, try to formulate useful result. Uh, it says uh, precisely the same, but there are differences. I am. I request my approximation to be in some convex set, not necessarily closed. There, yeah, this is not necessary. Uh, and uh, in all the linear images, I have one big box, and uh, I all have also some approximation, but for different U. I am uh, able to find a different A such that the error is small. And the conclusion is uh, the same that the shifted box uh, is contained in the nonlinear image. And the proof is again, really simple two lines or something. So this is uh, the useful thing. And uh, just uh, to apply this statement, uh, one needs to uh, solve two questions. What sets are allowed? Are there some sets? And of course, uh, if uh, these sets satisfy the error estimate and how to compute the box in the linear image. So this is uh, what I want to uh, go through uh, in the rest of the time. So first, what kind of sets A I am able to uh, take, how the error is uh, related with these sets. And the last slide will be about how to compute the box in the linear image. Yeah? So uh, choice of A. If uh, you are in the smooth case, the choice is obvious. This set, uh, you simply take the fresh air derivatives in all the points and you take the closed convex hull and then the approximation error is zero. Yeah? So in the smooth case, this set serves uh, as an approximating set with zero error. Uh, of course, instead of the derivatives, I can take any interval extension of the derivative uh, due to Neumann error. And uh, again, I end up with zero error. Uh, the problem uh, 
which remains is uh, here the closed convex hull. But we are lucky because if you have quadratic case, then the convex hull is not here. You simply take all the derivatives and uh, the convex hull here disappears and you always end up with uh, zero error. So this is uh, the gist of uh, our consideration that uh, in the case of quadratic mappings, I simply take all the derivatives and this is the precisely uh, usable set with uh, zero error. So this is a uh, smooth case. What uh, And we are uh, in uh, uh, variation analysis. So what about the non-smooth case? So uh, the first is uh, Lipschitz case. So of course, uh, if uh, your F is Lipschitz, then the Clark's generalized Jacobian is uh, precisely the right choice. And uh, this uh, set uh, is precisely uh, the one which corresponds again to zero error. And the zero error is uh, due to mean value theorem. And uh, if you produce statements uh, from my general results with this choice, you can obtain Purcio open mapping theorem from uh, this uh, uh, reference, Clark inverse and implicit function theorem uh, from this reference, and also non-smooth uh, Lusternik, uh, Graves, and Robinson theorems for the sum of a single valued and monthly valued mappings. Uh, the Robinson non-smooth theorem is due to Alexei Ismailov, and uh, the uh, Lusternik Graves is uh, from uh, the paper by Essen and Vladimir. And uh, in case of finite dimensions, I obtain the, all these statements as a really, really simple corollary. The proof is uh, uh, about the same complexity as uh, presented uh, before. And uh, I obtain these results in finite dimensions. Uh, so this is uh, Lipschitz case. If you are in continuous case, so your function is only continuous, then you, your choice should be the pseudo-Jacobian from this book. And again, you have a mean value theorem and uh, application of the general results go, uh, gives you uh, almost every regularity statement in the book uh, by Ekumar and Luke. And uh, in our setting is uh, only one, and we have uh, consequences. Uh, in the book, uh, non-smooth vector functions, uh, all, almost every from these results uh, have a slightly different proof. Yeah? So uh, our framework unify everything in one. Of course, uh, you can ask uh, if you are in infinite dimensions, what uh, you should uh, choose as an approximation, then uh, the right choice is Palazidan Jacobian. Uh, I have no time to go farther in the definition, but even if your X uh, is in finite dimensional space, but the target space is finite dimensional, you have the right choice of uh, the approximation object, uh, which again satisfies uh, the approximation with zero error due to some kind of uh, mean value theorem. So this is uh, in finite dimensional case. And the last slide is about uh, the situation uh, where you want to compute the box inside the linear image. So assume that you have a matrix which has full rank and you have a polyhedron and you want to compute the box, this box inside the linear image of the polyhedron then it is easy to do because you can simply reformulate it as uh, optimization over 
uh, linear inequalities so you can do everything uh, very cheaply and efficiently so uh, i hope that i answered all the questions uh, raised uh, in the theoretical uh, statement and uh, we successfully used this uh, in purely applied problems in uh, determine secure, uh, secure power injections in power network. So uh, I uh, have no time to uh, speak more. So thank you very much for your attention. And here are some references uh, where to find uh, the results and many more. The first is going to appear in set value and variation analysis. And the second one is just submitted to Journal of Mathematic Analysis and Application. So thanks you, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Radek, for this beautiful presentation very general so no point to ask for questions when you already said that you already answered all the questions and we we don't actually have time now for questions and i don't see any raised hands so we progress to the next talk thank you radek